Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair by Lair. Today we're talking about components, why you should start using them, get into the habit of using components in your designs. So I got a comment from Daniel on YouTube on basically saying you should definitely take a look at using components. It makes things a lot easier, especially when you're making multi-part projects. Um, he, he commented in quite a few different ways, uh, different videos. And in the latest uh, tutorial from yesterday, he gave me a couple links to take a look at. And there's a thread here on the Autodesk site where a couple of users in the community are suggesting to uh, the evangelists at, at Autodesk to start making their tutorials that talk about using components. Before you actually start sketching or modeling, you should really start using components. There's another document here called Five Things You Should Know About Components and Bodies. It's from Kaching. He works at Autodesk. And it's a really good read. Nice GIFs as well. Tells you about it. And he also did a video, a quick tip video. It's on the Autodesk Fusion 360 uh, uh, YouTube page here. And he goes through it in, in a good like three minutes about why you want to use it. I took a look at it and it is very like, okay, I'm going to start doing that today. And that's what we're going to do. So I have Fusion open already. Take a look at my latest design. This is the, uh, the NPR uh, internet radio using the Raspberry Pi. So where I would have used components is I should have all of these three, all of these buttons should definitely be its own component. Okay. I have linked components, which are fine. Those are linked. They're basically references to uh, to designs that were made outside of this master assembly. Uh, they're actual component components, right? So like a, 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 a sensor, a speaker, those are components to me. But they're also, they have their own things. Since they're linked, you can't, uh, vi it's, visibility cannot be changed because it's a read-only reference and document. Unless you break the link, right-click and break link, then you can start modifying it. But ideally, you want to use a linked component when you know that you're not going to change the component frequently. So again, what I should have done here is made these buttons into components. So here's a little test thing that I made real quick to show components. So one first thing you should do is come down here to the timeline. Those little icons is hide all inactive features. That's not turned on by default, but I have it turned on now. Another thing, go under inspect and turn this thing on, component color cycling toggle. You turn that on, you get a nice color-coded segmentation of your components. So you can see that the case is blue and um, the knuckle thing here is pink. And then if you look at your timeline, it's, it's also broken up. So you can see I have no bodies here. There are no bodies because the, the bodies are in their own components. So here's the case. And if I click on the case, you see the little button here? It says active, activate component. Look at my timeline. It only shows features that are within that pertain to that component. If I turn that off, it, that's why you have to have this little checkbox. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, you can see it. My face is like right on top of it right here. It says hide all inactive features. Make sure you have that on. So these are the only things that show to it. And you can see that the knuckle is like grayed out. It's still there. You can still reference it and stuff and draw on top of it, outside of it. But the, the timeline only shows what you need to see. So if I go to the knuckle part, it only shows those features that pertain to that component. So that is a really nice way to digest your massive timeline. If we go back to the NPR1 radio, you can see a lot of colors now happen. But everything is, there's a lot of things. And that's because I'm within this one component. And that shouldn't really be that way. That's a bad habit. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> and if I wanted to start putting things in components, it's not going to Fusion. It doesn't know to to take all of the features and then nest them. You can manually nest things. Like you say, I, I want to grab these things here, and then I right click on it and say um, create a group. I can create a group, but it's not really that intuitive. I think. And then if you wanted to like go to a feature, you can like always select a, 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 a some sort of face and then you look in the timeline, you still have to look through it and it's kind of annoying. Like, like, like okay, there's that piece there because it had that little three, the three notches or whatever in the, in, the, in the icon in the timeline that shows you, hey, that's that. But it's still very, very much more beneficial to have um, components. Another thing is take a look at all these sketches. I have a ton of sketches. 
when you make components, you will see that sketches that pertain to a specific component, a piece, a part, are only in that component. So I have four, uh, three sketches here that pertain to this. So if I drop this down and hide that, you can see inside. I have uh, the main enclosure, I have the standoffs, and I have a cut for the port. And those are all nested nicely within that case component. Same thing for the knuckle. If I go to the knuckle, I can see the, the sketches that I used to make it are only two of them. So it's all nice, neat, and organized, and that's what's up with components. Have I convinced you to start using components yet? I really hope so. <laughs> Uh, that is about it. I think that's all I wanted to do. Uh, well, how do you actually make components, right? Well, let me open up a blank document that I have here, test for tutorial. I don't have anything in it yet. And you can see if I start making a box using the primitive box tool thing, and I like whatever dimensions, it says operation new body. Let's change it to new component. That's one way to, to, to start off with a component. And then there's my, my bodies and then I have to select it. Remember, I have to activate it in order to get things in there. Because if I have this component active, remember, it's a master assembly. It has a bunch of different components. Then the sketch would, would show up in there in the master component, which I don't want. So you can see here that there's sketches there inside this, in this master assembly. I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that and then activate this component and then start sketches from within there. So now you can see that sketches are only in this component. And there's my timeline. So let me go ahead and delete all this stuff. And delete this component as well. Another way to make it is to simply right click in the master assembly and say new component right there. And then I'll, I'll name this case. And now I can start actually modeling something. So what I'll do here is I'm going to make that simple enclosure for this power boost. So I'll right click on my, uh, my component <laughs> right here, my document thing. And I'll say insert into current drawing. And I'll insert it into this workplace. Now I have this master assembly here selected. If I had case, it would import it into the case component, which I don't want. So I have it over here on the outside the main assembly thing. And I can move it around, put it wherever I want. Maybe right there. Hit OK. Hit Home so I can see it. There it is. Now I'll go to Case. I'll activate that. You see it, it grays this out, ghosts it out, because it, it's let me know I'm in this component. Now I'm going to start sketching on this bottom plane. And I'll make a simple little box. I won't even put dimensions, because I'm trying to rush through this, just to show you guys a real quick workflow. So I'll extrude it out, I'll hit OK, and then I will, let's do some fillets, go to select, make sure select through is on so I can do one of these dealies. Now I have four edges, every edge selected there, add a little fillet thing, hit OK. Now let's say I want to cut this guy in half and shell it out, I'll use the construction plane thing, the mid plane here, so you select uh, two planes and it'll figure out the middle and create a plane. So now I can use this plane to split the body. I'll click on that, click on the plane I just made. Hit OK. Is my audio OK still? Testing. Yep, it's all good. So that's split. So now I have two, open this up. Now I have two bodies. I have uh, even construction planes will only be nested to that specific component that you're in. So that's all nice and neat again. And I will hide this one here. Apply, let me hide. No, I don't need to hide anything right now, uh, except for the, the construction plane because I don't need it. I'll apply a solid, uh, I mean, a solid, a, a shell. Click on that, put 1.5. Let's go ahead and bring in the other piece and then hold on command. Oop, hold on command. Select that piece and I'll hit OK. So now both of my pieces are shelled out. And one thing I'll do is I'll move this guy. because my it's kind of outside of the case. You can see here, it's not really the best. And go top here. Let me double click on this guy. And I can bring this out still. Hit OK. 
I'll actually go back to this guy here and then you can see here before I created the thing and then move it move my power boost I need to move it up more uh, let's click on that first and then move it like that okay and go forward all the way to the end and it's still off a little bit I could probably still move it here I think it's moving the whole thing. Again, select your component and then hit move. Move it that way. Maybe this way like that. That looks okay. Hit okay. I mean, I'm not trying to be precise here because it's just like a quick uh, workflow thing. And that could just keep packing things on top of it. And of course, you, you got to keep in mind when you want to uh, create sketches to be in that component that you want and you'll end up something like like so right there uh, quickly again I'll, I'll make a new component I'll call this the knuckle knuckle and then even though uh, this is grayed out you can still reference stuff so I can still draw on top of it it wants me to capture position that's that's it's a good thing to do so I'll click on that, and I can make like, let's say I want the center of this guy. Click on that, over to there. This is going to be a construction line. And then I'll hit R for a rectangle. Change it to center type. Make some bogus stuff here. And then extrude it out like that. Hit OK. Add some fillets like that. I think you guys get the point so far and make a hole right here and you can see in a minute that all of these sketches and features that I'm making are going to be inside that component the two I found that to kind of be bugged out sometimes to that and then hit okay so it's kind of dynamic all right so there's that and then it's a different color uh, so if I want to see the whole thing I'll come up here and then here's all the segmentations of the features. So it's really, really easy to, to digest your timeline and focus on things per thing, per component. That's about it, guys. Um, it, you can see it's pretty straightforward to make it. The one thing that is kind of like, mm, is that you can't, you have to start from a component. You can't make a bunch of stuff and then insert things into that component. So if I were to go, if I were to like say, I want to make, all these one component and I say create components it's gonna make every body a component and that's not what I want because they're all just buttons they kinda of wanna be in its own thing you can do this you can create a, a component uh, from from a body and then like drop them in this is bad practice though I would not recommend it and then you can like drop it in there but look what it does in your timeline it really doesn't like condense all those features and put them in its nice little group. It doesn't do that. It just kind of creates a, a copy of the body, which is kind of kind of lame. So that's why it's very important to be, even before you start designing is to make your components and think about is this going to be a single part like this power boost, for example. Take a look at the the power boost. It is. It does have. It's this is the component like because I'm going to reuse this in many projects. You have to think about am I going to make uh, a master assembly here or I'm making a single part here so that's where you have to sort of it's up to you to, to, to decide whether your part is going to be a part a single component or a master assembly hopefully that'll make sense again I have I have these documents in this in this video linked definitely check them out get into the habit of using components that is all I want to talk about today I will start using them for everything just about everything that makes sense that's it, guys. Thank you, Dan uh, Daniel, for bringing that to my attention. I really appreciate when people uh, give me constructive criticism and, and, and constructive uh, suggestions. I appreciate your guys' time. Thank you so much, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.